Happy New Year to all. On this beautiful day, wonderful day in Nairobi, today is a day to rejoice in the Lord, to be happy that you've crossed into a new year, and to thank your maker for all that. Talking of joy, because a, year, a day of joy, I talk about Francis Atroli today. He must be basking in the joy of delivering on his promise to have a successful Buhungu 2 meeting. Indeed, yesterday in Kakameka, Francis Atroli delivered on his promise by bringing the Luya people, the Luya nation, to have a conversation about the direction of politics in this country. And with one voice, the people of the Mlembe nation, through their leaders, especially the elders, declared to walk the journey with Raila Molo Dinga under the umbrella of Azimiola Omoja movement. Many had said this was an unnatural thing. As it turned out, indeed, it was an unnatural thing. Atuoli was merely a facilitator, a convener. As was evident to all, he, ever, he never even spoke for five minutes. He let the Luya people spoke, speak. And from the Luya people, from their own decision, from their own declaration, they have chosen to walk this path with Raila Odinga. Francis Atuoli delivered on his promise to bring the people together to make a decision, a far-reaching decision. And the people were there in the Bukungu Stadium. The stadium was full. So the prophets of doom who said that he would not bring the people together because this was an unholy thing, that the few leaders will be those he would have perhaps compromised, were put to shame, as indeed the Luya stand out in the numbers. The rank and file, the Luya leaders were in the stadium. Atoli was there as a convener, but we saw the leaders themselves speak. Those who were threatened that the event would not take place must be dying with shame today. But I will not end this without mentioning a thing or two about those who spoke. They spoke good things about Ray Laudinga. That's quite in order. But they tended towards sycophancy. A day like that should not be spent on glorifying somebody. That somebody is already big enough. To say you'll support him was good enough was all you needed to do. Indeed, some of the leaders who spoke, I understand most of them were young people, should understand that it would have been much better to carry the people of Western with you by showing them that you understand the problems. You understand the problems facing the people of Western Kenya. And just by identifying one quickly, if you are given a minute, you then link this to the ability of Raila to solve that problem. That will work better next time. Secondly, while on these young leaders at the Bohungu Stadium, you spent inordinate time talking about Malala. You growing Malala. Malala was not anybody to be talked about. He's a junior politician. Had Raila not come in to save the day by bringing in Omondi, you people had built Malala beyond what he really is. I got the feeling as I watched the proceedings on television. I got the feeling that next time going forward, politicians on either side, Rutos, Mdavadis, Railas, you need to identify the speakers in time. Because going forward as we move to 2022, Every word that comes from your mouth, you the leader, even if it's not Raila, even if it's not Ruto, 
coming from those perceived to be speaking on your behalf, it could cost you. So I get the feeling that before you go to an important rally like that, or an important event, identify the speakers in advance. Let them go through some kind of orientation. Let them be processed. Let's say you, you'll touch on this, you, you'll talk about this, so and so talk about this as briefly as possible. But above all, let us be able to identify those kind of things we should not touch. The no-go zone. For yesterday at Buhungu, the leaders should have been told to keep off the Malala issue. Because you are glorifying somebody who is really nothing. So in future, I get that impression that you will need to sit down and identify the leaders who will speak. And if need be, identify what each person will speak or talk about. And they warn people against certain topics or against certain persons. Because it's critical. But the event was successful. I felt so bad for my leaders, my brothers Moses Wetangula. I felt so bad for my brother Salim Dabadi. And I speak from the bottom of my heart. I love this country. I love this country. I'm a Kenyan. But I also love my people, Amaluya. It pains me to see Luyas going astray. It pains me, and I've said it before. It pains me to see some leaders driving our, driving our leaders into a hole, a ditch. It pained me yesterday to see Salem Dabadi at the coast. When the nation, the Luya nation was addressing serious matters. How happy I would have been if Mdavadi and Wetangula were part of this conversation. Let's not lie to ourselves. The Luya interest is not cuttered for by anger, like I've said before. Anger against Uhuru Kenyatta, anger directed against Raila Odinga will not serve the interest of the Luya nation. So yesterday there were winners and losers. The losers. Top on the list, of course, Msalem Dabadi. Because from wherever you are, you must have seen the Luya people speaking. If you thought it was a trolley, you are wrong. A trolley wasn't speaking. A trolley convened the people and they listened to him. It shows Luyas are looking for a leader. They listened to a trolley. That's why they turned out in the numbers they turned out. That's why the leaders turned out in the numbers they turned out. You must have watched the entire community make a political statement. So sad that Salim Dabadi, Moses Wetangula, we, you, you were not part of this conversation. Because you could only sit pretty and happy if the so-called Francis Atoli event became a fiasco. If it didn't succeed. If 2,000 people attended the rally, you say, now you see, the lawyers are yet to speak. But the lawyers were there and they spoke. So you, you, indeed you are losers. Somebody comes to your home and uses your home to make a statement. You are the father of the home. Children are making a statement in your home. Because I've stayed repeatedly. Wycliffe Musalem Davadi is head and shoulder above, shoulders above all other lawyer politicians. There is no lawyer politician you can put here and put Mdavadi here and compare the two. The scales are heavily in favor of Mdavadi. So when you abdicate, when you abdicate this kind of responsibility, Musalia Mdavadi must see this as an, as an historical responsibility. History is beckoning to Musalia Mdavadi, telling them, lead your people, lead your people. And ultimately, you lead this country. You cannot lead your people and your country by keeping off, by basking in anger. No, you have a conversation with the people. You should have been there. So the losers top on the list. 
Salia mdabadi. Weta. The losers again. Because in your absence, many things will happen. You saw the defections. You saw people leaving ANC, going to ODM. You saw people of ANC abandoning Oka, my friend Savula, and going to Azimio. Things you could prevent or lead your people there with dignity and occupy an important position in Azimio La Umoja. Who tells you when you are there it will be Raila? You can be there and edge Raila out of the leadership of Azimio and you be the leader, the presidential flag bearer of Azimio. But you must be there. The next loser, Malala, Cleo Malala, my son. You've written your obituary. People have been murmuring and whispering that Malala is a wheelbarrow person. Yesterday it was clear to all and sundry. Indeed, Francis Atoli had said that the Mumia's meeting is not an Oka meeting. It was a wheelbarrow sponsored meeting and it was clear to all and sundry. So for the young man Cleophas Malala, you finished yourself politically. Ask Ababu Namwamba. You are joining the ranks of Babab Namamba. You will be in the cold and unknown to many people. Even where I work, I always tell people, you may underrate the job you are doing. But if you lose this small job you are doing, then you realize life can be tough. If you are a politician, it will be tough for you, as I sympathize for people like Anwa Iguru. Because, assuming she's, Anwa Iguru is sincere, and she's in UDA, Let's make it better for her, she wins. But Ruto loses, as indeed I suspect he will lose. Make no mistake, all those MCAs, all those MPs elected around the mountain, outside Azimio, outside Jubilee, will troop to Huru even before they are sworn in. They will go to Huru and Raila. And the first agenda of those people will be to impeach Anwai Guru. You can take it to the bank, because me, I speak it as it is. I say it as it is. So, Malala, you are joining people who will be in the cold. You'll be in company in Kakameka somewhere in a small hotel having a cup of tea and wondering who between you and Bonnie Halwale will pay for the cup of tea. Because as soon as, for example, William Samoy Ruto loses the election, mutaparara vibaya sana. Young people like Malala should play their politics carefully. Because age is not the excuse to play your, your politics carelessly. So my advice to people like Malala, respect your seniors. Number two, if indeed you must go outside, get something out of it. You will need it in future in the cold. It is so cold outside there. And I've argued before, and that's why I finish by telling people like Mdavadi, 2022 is a generational moment for this country. Whether you are 50 or 60 or 70 something, you will only be relevant in Kenyan politics post-2022 if you are part of government. Anybody who will not be part of government next year, the generational moment and change will sweep them away, never to be heard of ever again. You can take this anywhere. That if you are Salim Dabadi and you are not with a winning team, the generational move and change in this country will render you so irrelevant and so permanently, you'll wish you had listened to this person, this simple man called Manyora, telling you, play your politics very, very carefully. As I end, I must begin where I started. Congratulations to Francis Atroli for managing to bring my lawyer people together to make a statement because it's important for people to speak with one voice. Because this country has entered into a, a unique period, a period of coalition politics, a period where people team up with others to form government. This will remain with us for a while. And that's why I said it pains me to see that Wetangula, a light and a key son of the community, Mudabadi, a natural leader of the community, not working with others like Oparanya who, by the way, is among the winners for being declared the lawyer spokesman. Congratulations, congratulations, uh, Oparanya. These people ought to work together to deliver the lawyer nation out of the poverty.
to deliver some economic miracle, if I may call it. So, France Atroli, congratulations for the big day. The Luya people, congratulations. And the biggest winner of them all, Barbara Ila Molodinga. Congratulations for being picked by the Luya people as their leader. Thank you.